All right. So you can just turn around, Emma. You don't need to turn back that way. Dustin, you don't need to touch your desk again. So um, what we're going to do is I want to show you guys. Um, Sadiq, this is for you. So you might want to pay attention for this. So what I'm going to show you guys what to do is how to solve this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in any previous time that we've been doing factoring, right? We always wanted to set our equation equal to 0 to solve it. I'll go back through just a real quick example again. Let's say we had x squared, um, this was my previous example, x squared plus uh, 5x equals, uh, I'm sorry, equals uh, 14. Okay. We had to solve this. What we always had to do is solve by factoring. We always had to get this equal to 0. And the reason why is because when we learn to factor, Okay, um, positive 7. Okay, when we learned to factor, what we had to do is we had to set it as a, prod, as a zero product property. So we do our factor and we'd say x plus 7 times x minus 2 equals 0. Only when we had this point could we say this equals 0 or this equals 0 by the zero product property. It is essential that you guys understand this, Sam. That you guys understand when we have a factoring problem, and I say solve, you have to use factoring and you have to use the zero product property. You have to set it equal to zero, factor it, and set each of those equal to zero. So therefore you could say x plus 7 equals zero and x minus 2 equals zero. Now you can find the values of x that make that true. x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 2. That's what we've done before. Now it would be, it's a very easy and almost um, uh, natural for you guys to want to do that for this problem. Because that's the way we've been teaching it. Say, hey, get it set equal to 0, right? So you do that. So you'd subtract 2 on both sides. So therefore, you'd say x squared plus 4x um, plus 2 equals 0. But then you come into a problem when you do that because is this factorable? No, it's not even factorable. So we, there's still ways we could solve it, but there's a trick, kind of an easy way to look at this. And this is what you guys need to have your mind trained for, is looking for perfect squares. Remember, we always look at our last number. And can we determine, is that a perfect square? Or I'm sorry, is that a square number? Yes, 4 is a square number, right? It's 2 times 2. Then we say, is the square of that number, is that double? Remember we looked at perfect square trinomials? I said, is the middle term double? Your number, so is what two numbers multiply to give you 4, but then add to give you 4. And you guys can say, oh, well, that's x plus 2 squared equals 2. And the reason why this is so important is because by going from here to here, we don't have to use the zero product property anymore. Why is it we don't have to use the zero product property? Because I can rewrite this as x plus 2 squared rather than two different numbers multiplying to give you 0. All right, so now what I can use is my inverse operations. So therefore, I have x plus 2 equals the square root of 2 plus or minus the square root of 2, right? Subtract 2. Therefore, you get x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. Yes? Whatever you're in, even if this was, yes, even if it's x, um, x squared equals 4, when you introduce taking the square root, it's still going to be plus or minus. Okay, any last questions on this? Nope?